Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to talk about all things cows. Now if you've kept cattle in Farm Sim 22, then you're probably already good to go, but please, by all means, keep listening to the video because there just might be a tidbit of useful information later on. If you've never kept cows in Farm Sim or you're new to Farm Sim overall, then this video is definitely for you. Now there's a reason we're starting this video down at the animal dealer, and that's not because I want to chat it up with Kate. Well, that is because we need to talk about, before you even go and think about getting cows, we need to talk about the different kind of cows that are available in Farm Sim. There are four different breeds of cattle available in Farm Sim. We have Brown Swiss and we have Holstein. These cows are going to be ideal for milk production. That's going to be the primary source of income with these cows. They will reproduce, and as a result of them reproducing, well, you can also sell their offspring or you can sell off the older cows because you're going to have younger cows coming in. But overall, your main area of profit for these cows are going to be specific milk. We have two more breeds, and that is the Angus and the limousine. These two cows are going to be for breeding and breeding alone. That's why you're going to find the older cows are far more costly than the cows with respect to milk production because, well, they're going to be more costly to buy and also more costly to sell in the end. So you're going to get more profits with these. In addition to that, we can buy three different age groups of cows. We can buy newborns at zero months of age. We can buy six month old cattle or we can buy 18 month old cows. With respect to our milkers, that's how we're gonna to refer to our Brown Swiss and Holsteins going forward. Our newborns are gonna cost $200. Our six month old cows are gonna cost $525. And our 18 month old cows are gonna cost $1,175. Our beef cattle are gonna cost $300 for newborns. They're gonna cost $975 for six month old. And our 18 month old cows are gonna cost $2,325 each. Something else to note is that these cows are gonna have a gestation period of 18 months and it's gonna take them 18 months to reach adulthood. Therefore, it's gonna take 18 months till these cows are gonna start their reproductive cycle. And when they do start the reproductive cycle, they are gonna reproduce every 10 months. While we're down here, let's go ahead and talk about how we would purchase cows from our animal dealer. Well, you're going to need something like this NOAA TTW trailer. You're going to find this here under the vehicle shop, and we're going to scroll down till we get to our animals section. And from here, there's going to be a subsection called animal transport. From the animal transport, we have the NOAA TTW 140 trailer or the Wilson Silver Star trailer. These are the two trailers that you're going to use to transport your cattle. The Silver Star is going to be able to transport a total of 12 cows at a time. Meanwhile, the NOAA is going to be able to transport only six. The Silver Star will require a semi-trailer or a fifth wheel dolly trailer if you're going to make use of it with a tractor. Once you have that trailer in hand, you're going to come down here to the animal dealer. You're going to park it within this trigger and we're going to hit the R button. From here, we're going to be prompted with this loading menu. Here we have the option to load onto the trailer, and then we also have an option to offload from the trailer. We're gonna demonstrate that here in a minute. Let's just go ahead and load up six of our adult brown Swiss cows. We're gonna go ahead and buy those. Do take note that there is no service fee if you buy them here at the animal dealer with your trailer. And once we have bought those, we can see that they have been loaded into our trailer. Now let's pretend that we have advanced time. We have played the game some. We now want to sell some of our cattle. Well, we're gonna load up our trailer just like we did here from our animal pin. We're gonna drive our cows down here to the animal dealer. And once again, within the trigger, we're gonna hit R. But this time we're gonna click this button here, which is going to sell from the trailer. And we're going to click on the cows. We're gonna scroll our wheel up and then we're gonna hit sell. Now, do note, we are getting significantly less money to sell the same cows that we just purchased. So, yeah, this is not going to be a money-making endeavor, i.e. buying cows and then selling them right away. 
But if you think about the fact that you're going to be selling offspring, well, then those cows really didn't cost you anything to produce anyway. Now that you have a little bit of thought process on what type of cow you want to get, do you want to have milkers or do you want to have beef cattle, you're going to need to think about which pin you want to put down. We're going to go here into build mode, shift P on keyboard, and we're going to come down here to our animals. Then we're going to see our cow tab right here. It is important to note these three pastures here in front of us, they are for beef cattle and beef cattle alone. These two buildings behind us, well, those are for our milkers. And then we have another larger pin that we're going to place down here in a minute. That's also going to be available for our milking cows. So the reason these three pins are for your beef cattle alone is because they do not have milk triggers associated with them. So we have our open cow pasture for $15,000 and in its default configuration, it will hold a total of seven cows and seven cows alone. Do note that it will also have a requirement for water. And as we're gonna demonstrate here in a little bit, there are two different triggers, one for loose material and one for bales. Then we have our smaller cow barn here for $85,000. In its default configuration, it is going to hold 35 cows. And then we have the larger barn. It is going to hold a total of 99 cows in its default configuration. And once again, all three of these are not set up for milk. So do not put your milkers, if you will, in these pens because you're not going to get any output as a result. Let's talk about these buildings back here. Our smallest building here is $254,000. This building does have a milk trigger, so therefore we can put both either, either or, I should say, our milkers or our beef cattle. And in its default configuration, it's going to hold a total of 50 cows. Our larger building, which is right next to it, is going to be $518,500 in its default configuration. It is going to hold 96 cows. And then we have our largest building, which is basically the same size as this building, except it includes an auto feeding robot. And it's going to hold a total of 93 cows in its default configuration. Now you may be asking yourself, why do you keep saying default configuration? Well, that is because with respect to Farm Sim 25, we now have a new feature called dynamic pastures. And with dynamic pastures, we have the ability to define or extend and customize the fenced in portion of our cow pastures, our sheep pastures, our goat pastures, our pig pastures, and our horse pastures. And that's really a cool feature. And I want to demonstrate that right now. So when you go to place this building, you're going to be prompted. Do you want to customize the fence? Well, of course I do. And once we choose that option, we now have the ability to draw out our fence. So I just want to demonstrate that by kind of outlining this field real quick as best as we can to make your turns you're going to have to uh, place your building down and of course putting this fence down does cost us money but what we're going to see here in the end is that the number of cows that we can now support in this pasture is going to be greatly increased as a result. So here I made a mistake. So I can't put, for whatever reason, I can't put the fence where I wanted to put the fence. We're going to hit H to delete the last segment. You notice how I place this down in small segments. That's going to be advantageous because if you ever want to redo it or redefine the area, you're going to have to go back to the last segment you placed. And there we go. We know we're good when the fence wants to snap to the building. If the fence is not snapping to the building, then you want to delete a segment and retry. Once we finish that, it's going to ask us, are you wanting to plant meadow for your cow barn? Well, yes, I do. And now we have meadow grass planted within the fenced in area. This looks like a quite nice pasture, if I do say so myself. Now, let me meet you over there, and we'll talk about how many cows we can now put in that building. Remember, the default configuration was 93. So the new building that we constructed and laid out, 
we can now support a total of 243 cows in this particular facility. Since this is a milking facility, just imagine what we could do here. I'm going to scroll up and see how high this lets me go. In Farm Sim 22, it would only let you get, think, like 60. But it looks like I can buy all the way up to my maximum quantity of 243 in one go. That is absolutely amazing. What do 243 cows look like in a pasture? Well, we don't see all 243. We're only seeing a subset of those just for kind of game performance purposes. But there you go. That is the dynamic pastures feature. Now, some folks are gonna ask me, how many cows were listed there? I tried to count them, I came up with 25. That seems to be the limit. I believe that was the limit with respect to rendering of animals in FS22 as well. Now that we have placed our pasture down and we know what cows we want, we know how to purchase the cows, we know how to deliver them here, I wanna talk about one caveat related to what happens if you just wanna buy them here because you can very much well do that if you want. Well, if you wanna buy your cows or any animal at the pasture itself, which is perfectly possible to do, there is gonna be a slight fee associated with that. Maybe I should demonstrate this from a building that's not full. Hmm, that might be a good idea. At any rate, you're going to see that we're going to have a fee. And that fee is going to vary dependent on the animal's age. Our newborns are going to cost $50 per in order to deliver them to our animal pen. Our juveniles are going to cost $65 per. And our adults are going to cost us $100 per. And that cost is going to remain the same across all four breeds of our cows. Something else to note with respect to Farm Sim 25 that is new to the game is that our cows have different ages and have different appearances in game. This pasture is full of newborns and we have here our limousine and our Angus cows newborns here. You see they are struggling to stand up and kind of learning to get their legs underneath of them. They will make this and keep this appearance until they are six months old. Once they advance to six months old, then they will transition, if you will. They'll grow up to be our juvenile cows. And here we have our juvenile cows. Once again, they are limousine and Angus cows. And they will remain at this character level, if you will, until they reach adulthood, which is going to be 16 months of age and once they reach that well then they're going to convert into full-grown cattle and that's what we see here once again limousine or angus varieties if you wanted to see what our different age groups of holstein look like well i happen to have all three of those in this pen so we have our newborns we have our juveniles and we have our adults and then the same with respect, with respect to our brown Swiss in this pasture over here. Our newborns, our juveniles, and our adults. Now that we have our cows and we have our pins, we need to talk about how are we going to feed them? Well, as I mentioned earlier, this open pasture has an interesting caveat. It is going to require us to supply water. This is the only cow building that is going to require water because the others, since they are actually structures, we're just going to imagine they have water piped in. They have an auto watering system. But for this outdoor pasture, we will need to provide water. We also have two different feeding triggers. We have in front a feeding trigger for bulk or loose material delivered either via trailer or some sort of forage wagon. And then we have a bale trigger actually inside this feeder. And I did want to demonstrate that aspect. So here I have a front loader. This is a self-propelled front loader and some bale spikes. And I wanted to demonstrate that if I place this bale right here and pull my forks out you're gonna see that this bale is still 9,000 liters 
right? Nothing's happened. If I take this now and place this bale inside, Oh, look at me. I picked the only one. There we go. <laughs> All right, that's funny. But at any rate, now we can see our bale is, well, it was, shrinking, and the hay was going into the feeding trough. Let's, let's come at this at a different angle. Of course, I would pick the one bale that would not actually fit in there in the orientation I was trying. Okay, back to this. You can see now, if you look, our bale capacity in the lower right is reducing. Our food trough levels is increasing as the bale is being processed, if you will, by the trigger. And we can also demonstrate that here by going to our animal pin. We're going to cycle over to the proper one. And we can see that the hay indicator is going to be increasing as it is being processed. Now let's talk about some of the machinery that you might need. We've already talked about the front loader. If we go to our vehicle shop and we scroll up here to loaders, we're gonna find the front loader category. We can either have self-propelled front loaders like the Schaefer that we used here, or we could have front loader arms that we're gonna to use to attach to our tractors if our tractor has a front loader arm attacher. We can then use these tools in order to connect to either our self-propelled front loader or our front loader arms. And specifically for cattle, you're going to want a bale spike. You're probably going to want a manure fork or a universal bucket. Depending on your bale, you may want a spike or you may want round bale grabbers. It really is up to you. You could also go with a telehandler or a skid steer with respect to moving around, processing bales, and silage or manure you're also likely going to want something like this pickup truck sorry this is not a pickup truck like this international cv series farm truck we can get it in multiple configurations this one is shown with a flatbed this is going to be very useful for transporting bales either from the field to the farm or from the farm to your pasture for feeding i mentioned the open pasture is going to require water and here we have a water tanker we're going to find that under our vehicles shop in the animals category. Once again, under barrels, the water tanker I have in this video is the 1600. We can use any of these four water tankers for transporting water to that particular pasture. You may wish to have a trailer or a forage wagon. I have here a trailer. This would be useful if you are going to feed loose material. And speaking of feeding loose material, if you want optimal production out of your cows, you're going to need a total mixed rations feed mixer. Here we have the Far Sin PF2.24 Plus. We're going to find this here under our vehicle shop, and we're going to find that under animals, under forage mixers. There are three trailed forage mixers. There are two really cool and interesting self propelled forage mixers. We're going to get to a segment or we're going to get to another video i should say a dedicated video on tmr itself and i'll demonstrate the use of one of these with respect to mixing up tmr but this building is really cool or this machine is really cool because it is going to allow you to directly ingest your silage from a silage bunker or pick up loose material from the ground with respect to TMR, like I said, that is going to be a dedicated video all in itself. But overall, TMR is going to provide you 100% effectiveness for your cows and is going to be at a minimum composed of hay and silage. Now you can kind of stretch it by adding straw to the mix. And if you wanted to go full bore, you could also add a little bit of mineral feed to the mix. Or if you're using that automated robot down at the automated feeding building, you're going to need to provide all four of these ingredients, mineral feed, straw, hay, and silage. Your cows are going to be able to off-put manure as an output, but only if you provide them with some straw. 
And in order to provide them straw, you're gonna to need to provide a straw blower or shredder. Here I have a Ravage straw shredder. And I wanna show you where these are in the shop. Well, they're gonna be under animals and under straw blowers. We have the Primor 15070M and the Ravage, which is the one I'm using here today. And the Ravage is pretty cool because what we're gonna do is we're gonna unfold it. And then with our left mouse button, we're gonna be able to move up and down the mouse to move the loader. And we're simply going to reverse this. And then we're going to hold the left mouse button down, move our mouse back toward us. And we're gonna lift this thing up into the shredder. And then we're gonna hit X to fold our forks back up. And we're gonna be able to bring this over to a building. I'm gonna use this building right here as a demonstration. And we're gonna be able to basically shred our bale into the building. Now this particular blower has two different functions. Right now we're seeing it basically unload. We can then change this by hitting the U button to straw blower mode. And there we go. If we pay attention here, we can see that our straw plane is going up as we add more straw to our pasture. And if we check our information screen, we come over here to our large barn. Uh, there's the right icon for the barn. This is what we have in the barn. You can see that our straw is increasing. Now, while we're on this screen, let's talk about other things related to productivity and health. As you can see, our cows in this particular barn have 6% productivity and 3% health. I'm not overly worried about it right now because it is August. It's the first day and we've just put these animals in here. But in order to maximize health and productivity, we're gonna to want to maximize our feed as well as provide straw if it is a building that is going to accept it. As you can see here, we can offer up to one, two, three, four, five different feeding sources. We have meadow grass. Our cows are grazing animals and they're gonna be able to graze the grass that is within their pasture assuming that there aren't too many cows in that pasture and that there's ample grass to support them. As they continue to eat that grass in a pasture, well, you're gonna see that this level is going to reduce until it gets down to completely zero, which then imply that they have now completely consumed all of the grass within the pasture. We can also provide them grass. That would be us going out and mowing a meadow somewhere, collecting the grass either with a forage wagon or a baler, bringing that grass in either loose or in a bale format and putting it here in the feed trough. We can also provide silage or hay, but let's cycle back here because you're gonna see that meadow grass and hay grass have 40%. Our cows are what I call cereal eaters. No, they don't eat, they don't eat Wheaties. They eat one thing at a time and only that thing until it's gone then they will eat something else. But they are very picky. They only eat the best food possible. Okay? So through the magic of farm sim, if you have put grass, silage, hay, and total mixed rations in an open trough, your cows are going to pick out only the mixed rations until it is done. And then once they have consumed all the mixed rations, they will consume hay. And only after they've consumed all the hay, and assuming you haven't put more mixed rations in there, will they consume silage or will they consume grass? So they will start at the best food source, 100%, and eat that until it's gone. Then they will eat the next best food source. In order to maintain the best productivity and the best health, always feed them the best food source possible, which is going to be for cows, total mixed rations. As you can see here, we have filled the trough, basically completely full with hay. And we have just a wee little bit of silage in here, 458 liters. Something else to keep in mind with respect to 
animals that have multiple food inputs. Your total capacity here is going to be the total capacity of all of these food inputs in the trough. If you have filled up the trough to 100% with, let's say, hay, then you will not be able to feed total mixed rations at all until some amount of this hay has been consumed down. As we can see here, I have placed a bale of silage here in the food trough. This both demonstrates that one, you can feed bales at this trough, unlike the open pasture where you had to put the bale in a specific location, but also it demonstrates that since we have filled up this food trough with hay at this point, our silage is being consumed extremely slowly. It's basically being consumed or introduced into the feed trough at the same rate that our cows are consuming the hay that is in the trough itself. So once again, be very cautious. If you ultimately plan on feeding mixed rations, but you're not ready to go with that quite yet, don't fill the trough up with hay or with silage or with grass to 100%. Fill it up partway and make sure that it's only partway full. Because if you fill it up all the way, when you are ready to convert over to total mixed rations, you're going to have to wait for those cows to consume down whatever inferior food source that you have in there until you can really top it off with total mixed rations and be confident that they're not going to run out of total mixed rations and then start eating down the lesser food. Now I've gone ahead and fast forwarded a day because I wanted to come back here and show you with respect to the meadow grass. What I have found is the meadow grass typically doesn't show up the first day that you put down a pasture. Maybe if you put it down very, very first thing you do when you load in, by the time you get to the evening, maybe it's going to register. But overall, typically I found that it waits till an overnight cycle before meadow grass is showing up. So if you want to maximize your productivity and your health of your animals, it's best to feed them the first day you put them in. Don't count on that meadow grass. Don't count on the grazing functionality as the primary food source if you want maximum productivity and maximum health. Because again, meadow is only going to give them 40% of their overall effectiveness. As we can hear, see here with their open pasture, we have 3,158 liters of grass in that open pasture. And we have our hay, and then we have our total capacity listed right there. If we cycle over now to our other cow barns, and we also have then a total capacity, which is going to be our total mixed rations, plus our meadow grass for this area. You can see we have straw. We do have slurry showing up here. And we also have a little bit of milk going on. Since we did feed these cows TMR, we have 100% productivity our second month, 100% health, and we are 10% into our overall reproductive cycle. Because again, remember, these guys are going to reproduce every 10 months. So every month, it's going to be 10% until you get all the way up to the top, unless their health and productivity suffers. So let's cycle over here to our large cow barn, which now has our limousine cows. We can see here we only fed them hay. And we also have silage in here, but they are still at 100% productivity, but their health is only at 69%. That is, again, because we didn't feed them the best possible food source. As such, well, they're not reproducing. You want to keep their health up so that they will reproduce. If their health starts to drop, their reproductive cycles will cease or slow down significantly. So here we can see we have 62,000 liters. We have 49,000 liters of hay, 5,200 liters worth of silage, and 7,300 liters worth of meadow grass. The cows are going to eat down the hay, then they're going to eat down the silage, then they're going to finally get to meadow grass if we get them to that point. Our feeding robot, well, our total effectiveness is... Here, this is going to be our meadow grass. You can see we have a significant amount of meadow grass because we have a significantly large pasture. But we have zero productivity. We have 0% health. And as a result, we have 0% reproduction going on because, again, we're just counting on that meadow grass. We really need to be feeding them something 
in order to boost that productivity up because we're getting zero milk out of these guys. Zero. The only thing they're doing is producing slurry. So they're they're pooing pretty good, but that's about it. Also wanted to talk about storing food. So there's multiple ways to store food. If you wish to do bulk feeding, well, you can store it in a hayloft. You're going to find the hayloft under our sheds category. And then we're going to cycle over here to silos. And our hayloft is going to be located here in a silo section. $63,500. And the base game hayloft a field doesn't really hold a whole lot of capacity. It only holds 250,000 liters of hay or straw or a combination of both of those. If you are going to work with bales, though, we do have a bale building. It's going to be $49,000, and it's going to hold a total of 250 bales or pallets. So here we have our hayloft. Again, it's going to hold 250,000 liters of hay or 250,000 liters of straw or some combination of hay and straw. Again, up to a total of 250,000 liters. We have our output pipe, and then we're going to have our dump point here on the side. We have our... Bale shed located right here. We're going to deposit our bales into storage and we're going to come over here and this is where we're going to pull bales out of storage. If we have any in storage, we'll have a menu. Now, I do want to say as of game version 1.2.1, there is a bug going on with bale storage and you may have issues in getting bales out because the spawn point for the output seems to be overlapping the input. So when you spawn bales out, they instantly go back in. Kind of frustrating, right? Well, currently the short-term fix for that, until we get a game update that corrects this problem permanently, is to position something here in the output trigger. That will cause the bales to spawn outside the trigger and therefore not be ingested back in. Again, that is with respect to version 1.2.1 of the game. First time we get an update, that is going to be resolved. So if you are watching this video some point in time in the future, then it is likely already been resolved. Let's talk about our cow outputs. What do our cows produce? Well, our cows produce milk. If you have your milkers, our cows will simply reproduce. If you have your beef cattle in all regards, if you have a manure heap positioned, you're going to get manure as well as an output here we have use of the manure heap extension this is what i would recommend you place at your buildings we're going to find that under build mode we're going to toggle over to silo extensions and then we have our manure heap located right here now i will say again as of version 1.2.1 there may be a bug with these two buildings and the use of a manure heap because I had one positioned here. We had straw in the building. Manure did not spawn. So either this building is bugged currently in 1.2.1 and does not provide manure, or it just isn't supposed to provide manure at all. And if that's the case, then I got to wonder why it's asking for straw. The same with this. I tested this. This I wasn't able to get manure out of either. So again, it may be a bug or some other feature, if you will. So this building definitely will produce manure. This building will definitely produce manure. And the large feeding robot building will definitely produce manure. When placing these, you need to place them within a particular range of your animal pasture. So if we get too far away, it's going to tell us that, um, well, we're too far away from our building. So let's come over here again. So we move too far away. It's going to say, you are too far away, right? You need to be placed next to a barn. As we get closer, we're going to get within range. And then we know that we can put it down and it's tied to this building. We move too far away from it. Again, we're going to be out of range. So do have a little bit of thinking when you are placing these buildings as to where you might want to put your manure heap if you want to collect manure from your cows. And again, manure is going to also require that you are using straw. Each of these last three buildings, not these two buildings, but these buildings, they also provide slurry storage, but you may want to increase your slurry storage. And to that extent, we have slurry storage extensions. I've already placed a small one here. 
we can also put down a large slurry storage extension and it is going to hold 2.6 million liters and it needs to be close enough to a barn in order to basically be recognized and placed down so manure is going to be an output as i mentioned but manure is going to require straw to be used if you do not use straw then you are going to definitely get slurry as an output and we already have some slurry stored in this building in addition to our slurry well for our milkers we're going to get milk of course to transport our milk we're going to want to make use of a liquid tanker and i happen to have one of the two liquid tankers that are available in the game that will also allow us to transport milk and it is located right here the mks8 if we go back here into our vehicle shop we're going to come down to our animals and barrels once again and these two are going to be what will allow us to transport our cow milk as well as our goat milk and water liquid herbicide and liquid fertilizer but obviously you don't want to transport all those at once i have here the mks8 it is going to be a smaller one this one is going to be primarily intended for transport with a semi or a fifth wheel dolly trailer in addition well you may want to do something with your slurry slurry is going to be able to be used in two different ways one you can put it on your field as fertilizer and if you do that you're going to want to have a slurry tanker we're going to find those here under yield improvement and we have our slurry tankers the super cease 800 is what i have in this video but you can get one of these various slurry tankers self-propelled or trailed and some of these larger tankers are also going to require the purchase of an applicator and in order to do that you just want to come in here to combinations and it's going to tell you which applicators are going to work basically for the tanker of choice this one is going to be a drag line which is going to basically put slurry on the surface of the ground if you pick a different tanker then you'll have a different combination and you'll possibly be able to use something like this which will cultivate the ground at the same point in time applying slurry in the ground as opposed to on top of it if you are providing straw well then you're going to be able to get manure and for manure you're going to be able to also put it on your fields as fertilizer and to do so you're going to need something like this manure spreader we have in this video the TA12050 Power Spread Plus Manure Spreader. And that is going to be able to be used by taking it over to a manure heap. And you can either load it via a bucket or you can position your manure spreader right beside the heap and basically hit R to load straight into the manure spreader via Farm Sim Magic. Now, if you should choose not to load your manure and slurry onto the field as fertilizer, well, you could bring it down to the biogas plant. And the biogas plant, depending on your map, may be pre-placed on the map, or you could put your own down like we have here. And you can bring your slurry over to a unloading point like this and dump your slurry into the BGA. Or if you have manure, you may be able to dump it either in front of or inside the digester. And from there, it's going to process that into electrical energy, methane gas, and digestate. What's interesting about digestate is you can use it on your fields as fertilizer. So it's kind of a twofer. You take your slurry or manure, which can be used as fertilizer. You bring it down here to the BGA. The BGA processes it. You're going to get a little bit of money as a result of the electrical generation and the methane gas that it's going to auto sell. And you're going to get a slightly reduced amount of digestate as an output, which you can then, guess what, put it on your fields as fertilizer. Let's go and check this out here with respect to our production. So our BGA, we're going to take 200 units worth of manure input, and it's going to produce 120 units of electric energy, one unit of methane, and 180 units of digestate. So we're basically losing 20 units of manure with respect to our energy and methane, and we're getting 180 units of liquid digestate back out. We're going to see pretty much the same ratio with respect to our slurry as well. 200 units in, 180 units of digestate out. I feel this is kind of like a uh, 
kind of a twofer, as I mentioned earlier, right? You take something that can be used as fertilizer, but you put it in there, you get a little extra money for it, and you also then get as an output something that you can use as fertilizer. And you really don't lose that all much. Now, with respect to your milk, well, you got lots of options for milk. And let's see what we can do here. You can bring milk to a dairy production point, or you can sell milk directly. Let's take a look here at our prices screen and see really what's going on. So with respect to bulk milk, bulk milk can be sold at a dairy sell point. Here on Riverbend Springs, we do have a dairy placed on the map, but this dairy is not a production. It is a sell point. And as such, it is only going to want to purchase our milk. We're not going to be able to do anything else with it. With respect to easy economy, we're going to see an average low price of $1,890 or an average price of $2,289. But that's not the conclusion to what we can do with our milk. We can bottle our milk. And if we bottle our milk, we can sell it at multiple locations. We can sell it at a bakery, farmer's market, the Goldcrest Valley train sell point here on Riverbend Springs, restaurant, the small farmer's kiosk that is out by the street at the starting farm, or we could buy milk, bottled milk from the warehouse. Do not, do not ever do this. This is not a good idea. Why is bottled milk something that may be worth looking into? Well, it has an average low price of $15.66 and an average high price of $18.96. And you may say to yourself right out the bat, well, that's lower price than raw milk, so why would I want to do that? Because of this. If we come here to our dairy and we come here to our bottled milk, you know, see that 10 units of bottled milk is going to make 20 or 10 units of raw milk is gonna make 20 units of bottled milk. We're doubling our milk. So if we come back here to our prices screen and this price is per thousand liters, we're gonna get $2,289 per thousand liters of raw milk. If we take that same thousand liters of raw milk and run it through the dairy, we're gonna get 2,000 liters worth of bottled milk at which we can sell for $1,896 per thousand liters. Pretty good turn on an investment. What else can we do with our raw milk? Well, we can make butter. And butter has an average low price of $3,024 per thousand liters on easy economy. Or an average high price of $3,663 again on easy economy. What else can you do with milk? Well, we can make cheese. Cheese has an average low price of $4,860 per thousand liters or an average high price of $5,886 per thousand liters. What else can we do with milk? Well, we can make chocolate if we combine it with sugar. Of course, we'll need to also own the sugar factory, but at any rate. Chocolate is going to have an average low price of $5,460, or an average high price of $6,480, again, on easy economy. What else can we do with milk? Well, if we really want to deep dive deep into our production chain, we can make cake with our milk. In addition to lots of other things, but at any rate, cakes are going to have an average low price of $8,910 on easy economy or an average high price of $10,791. Let's take a look at these productions. So again, we're talking about butter. 15 units of milk in, 13 units of butter out. Our large placeable dairy or the dairy possibly on a map that is production might produce a cycle of 480 cycles per month. We do have a small dairy that we can place down and the small dairies are going to basically process at one fourth the input, or sorry, one tenth the input. So in this case, butter is gonna be made at 48 cycles per month. Cheese is going to be three units of milk in, two units of cheese out at 132 cycles a month for the small dairy or 1,320 cycles per month for the large dairy. I mentioned chocolate. Well, chocolate is going to take milk and sugar and it's going to produce chocolate. So if you do have access to sugar, 
do not buy it at the warehouse, then you can also make chocolate. Or if you invest in the bakery, well, the bakery is going to be able to make cake and you're going to be able to make cake with flour or rice flour, as well as a multitude of other ingredients, which are going to include sugar, bottled milk, eggs, butter, which again is a derivative of milk, and strawberries in order to get a whole lot of cakes. So this can be really be profitable, but you will need to have a pretty good deep dive into some production chains because you're gonna need the grain mill for your flour or rice flour. You're gonna need some chickens for your eggs. You're gonna need milkers, obviously for your bottled milk and butter. You're also gonna need a greenhouse for your strawberries and you're gonna need a sugar mill for your sugar. Here we have the placeable dairy. I went ahead and pre-placed. I really like this dairy. It is kind of a small structure, which makes it easy to place and kind of an interesting shape because it is like kind of a triangle. Then we have our small placeable dairy production located right here. And I wanted to go ahead and show you what the pallets look like. So here we have our bottled milk. We have our pallet of butter. We have our pallet of cheese. And we have our pallet of chocolate. Again, if you go ahead and invest into a sugar mill. We have a placeable bakery. We have then the small placeable bakery. And then this is what our cakes look like if we deep dive that far down into the production chain. So guys, that is just about it. That is everything that I think you're gonna to need to know with respect to cows in Farming Simulator 25. Did I miss anything? Let me know down in the comments below. Hope you all liked this video. If you did, please go ahead and click the like button. By all means, share this video with other Farm Sim 25 players that you may know that may have questions with respect to cows. We're gonna be continuing our series on animals you can find links to those in my how-to playlist. I will be putting a tick up in the upper right corner to my, sorry, it's called Tips and Tricks for Farm Sim 25. I renamed it. I'm going to have a tick in the upper right corner, a link to my Tips and Tricks playlist, where all of these types of videos are going to be included. I'm going to have one for all of the various animals. We're also going to be putting out one very soon with respect to TMR specifically. And then we'll have one dedicated to silage with respect to the various ways to make silage, because you can either make that in bale form or by compacting it into a bunker. And until next time, happy farming.